I actually gave up and I was underwater. And I was praying to my mother and father, I'm, I'm coming now. Early August, late afternoon, a call comes in from a bystander who spotted someone in the water on the Cramond Causeway. Any time that we get told that, you know, on someone's in the water on the causeway of Cram and Island, it's, it's, yeah, the urgency goes up. We need to get going and we need to get there quick. We've got the three. Nine minutes after the page has sounded, the lifeboat launches and heads to Cram and Island. So as we were launching, I heard the Kinghorn lifeboat, they're our flank station, we're also attending. Kinghorn speeds to Cramond Island from the east, while Queen's Ferry approaches from the west. We could see the concrete pillars that mark the causeway, and the water was really far up them. Okay. It's even harder on the causeway because you've got lots of big concrete pillars that are also dark. It's a mile that you need to search. Petra spotted something out to the right, way far away from where we thought the casualty was going to be. So in the distance, we saw what looked to be somebody holding on to one of the partially fallen pillars. They were very much just kind of draped, draped over it, clinging on for dear life, really. And the water was kind of rising, like, right up almost to their mouth. Stay where you are, just stay, mate. Just keep holding on. We could hear him moaning, which is great in one thing, because you know he's still alive, but then also suggests that he's not in a great way. As the casualty is clinging to a concrete pillar on the east side of the submerged causeway, getting close to him will be risky. There's not a lot of water over the causeway, and there is a danger to our engines. If we'd rushed in, we risk damaging our boat, and we can't rescue anybody if we ourselves need to be rescued. Fortunately, just as Stuart is weighing up his options, he spots the Kinghorn lifeboat on the horizon approaching at full speed. Kinghorn lifeboat, this is Queen's Ferry lifeboat, over. Uh, we're just off where the casualty is just now. I think it's going to be easier for you to get them because uh, we've got the walkway in between us and the stanchions over. The Kinghorn lifeboat arrives and moves in towards the casualty. And got close to him, uh, he, the casualty was uh, making a lot of noise. But he didn't seem particularly lucid, and it was suspected it may have been hypothermia. Hypothermia causes confusion, and uh, people's bodies begin to shut down. So I directed a couple of crew members to get hold of him and uh, pull him in as quickly as possible. Sometimes when we go out to save someone, as you're kind of pulling them in, they're helping themselves. But the casualty on this occasion, it was genuinely, it was almost like he was lifeless. Both lifeboats head to nearby Cramon village to rendezvous with an inbound ambulance. Three, two, one, lift. His hands and his feet were all cut to shreds. He, his torso was covered in cuts from the barnacles and rocks that he'd been holding on to. The casualty is immediately rushed to Edinburgh Royal Infirmary to be treated for cuts, secondary drowning and extreme hypothermia. I remember an ambulance and an oxygen mask being put on and I, my clothes being torn, I, I, I don't recall much then. Danny had been on a long planned pilgrimage to Scotland to trace his family's history. When a woman on his campsite told him about Cramond Island and its World War II fortress, he knew he had to visit. I hadn't seen any signs at all warning me of the high tide, low tide change. It took me maybe an hour or two to go around, and within that time frame, the tide had come in, and the walkway, the causeway, is, had vanished. It, it, it was gone. 
I figured I can swim this. I know I can swim this, no problem. I used the pillars as a guide, knowing that the walkway was right next to it. I really wasn't aware of the cold at that time. I knew I just had to move and keep on moving. But I just lost completely all my, my strength. I actually gave up and I was underwater. And I, I actually was praying to my mother and father, I'm, I'm coming now. I felt, well, I'm, I'm hoping I'm coming to join you, I guess. I, never in my life, never in my life have I felt that way. There was a pillow in front of me there, and I just clung on to that with my whatever I had left in me. Danny managed to haul himself up the broken pillar and clung to it as the current continued to tug at him. His cries managed to catch the attention of a passerby who saw him in the water and called the Coast Guard. If we were minutes later, if we, if we hadn't been called, it could have been a really different outcome. Those people were absolutely amazing there. The rescuers and those people, the hospital will always be in my heart. <laughs>